<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Songs of Six. Welcome back to Atlantic City, our beautiful little Nevian city, where we focus on trying to maximize the amount of Nevians we have in our city while conquering the world and spreading fish everywhere possible. Mostly this is just my attempt at uh, seeing if I can or can't make a great Amevian city because eventually we're going to run out of space. Uh, you can see we've already taken up quite some space, but eventually we'll also get rid of some of these Galapian pastures. I think we have captured a few regions. Yep. So I've been playing, like I said, a couple different series or uh, cities in the background. I keep calling them series. It, it, it just happens to be like that all the time. I don't know why. But I've been playing as the Cretonians in the background. And they are extremely challenging. I've already had riots and, and faith problems and all this stuff. And I have one shrine in this city and fish. And they're very happy. So I don't know. I think that the Mevians definitely have a real buff when it comes to happiness overall. But in the last episode, we had built up a decent amount of weapons. And matter of fact, now we can actually change these guys' weapons over to... Stabby stabs, like that, and it looks like we have enough armor. Uh, and we could also probably get a couple more guys in this group here. So we're going to try to keep growing our military. But obviously we've been purchasing uh, mercenaries and kind of capturing regions that way. The only reason re we re really want to have a large military though is so that we can protect ourselves. You can see that because of our riches and our small garrison size, uh, enemies think they're going to come and beat us up, which is fine. I'd like to actually get into some conflict with my troops. So ideally, we're going to keep training these guys up, 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 up. And probably give them each a Falcata. Double Falcatas. I think those are, yeah, Falcatas. And we'll give a couple more guys in here. I'm going to try to try to do our best to maximize our population. You can see we've got a lot of aspiring immigrants. We're going to get half of those guys into the... And we're going to get to work. We got a lot of housing we need to place in here. We got a lot of work to do. So I'm going to get to it. And you guys can follow along uh, in bits and pieces. You know, I like to kind of separate these videos. As you start to get into the later parts of the game, uh, it definitely slows down a little bit. And we're going to have to build tight knit housing. That's something that I think we're going to have to get used to. Matter of fact, before we do that, we'll do two lanes. Simply because we want to have space for a light. And these houses will likely stay here for a very long time. So, we're going to go like that. Put these houses down here. And those guys will live over here. And we're going to have to put some housing over here as well. So, let's look where the noise is. It's kind of noisy in this area. So, what we could do is put a road here. Oops. We want to get... The uh, brick road. We'll put some like that. Probably put a road down from here. And it looks like there's noise. A little bit of noise in here. So we might put some services along here. But ideally we want to put some houses. In here. I think we could probably get away with. A good amount of houses. I don't want to block that road. Because it's probably going to continue down that way. So we'll do this. I think that looks good. Uh, and these guys will be living and working nearby. Close-ish to the noise. Matter of fact, we'll just remove that. And we'll delete this job here. Give it that. That way there's no noise to bother them. And we will do something along the lines of this here. And we're going to build a wall around this total. Like that. Alright, here we are. We've got a chance to test our boys against some Talapi Raiders here. Let's see what we've got. Only 57, which is good, because we outnumber them by a good deal. Some of them have bows. Some Cretonians, some Telepis. For the most part, they all have bows. 
So we have no option but to rush them. I'm having boys. Get over here. And Tilapia are Amavian archers. We'll have them kind of over here. They'll shoot. Uh, but these guys with no armor and low training are going to go in first. And then these boys with the better training are going to follow behind them. Taking the brunt will be these boys. Of all the damage that's coming. We're going to attack them. Looks like we're at a weird angle, I know. But there is a reason. Let's get in there. Tell them to go straight. And hold space if you'd like to keep your orders organized, kind of like how I do. And then we're even going to get these guys. We'll get them to line up this way. Alright. Hold your fire, because now our boys are there. Looks good. So you're going to pause. These guys are going to form the envelopment here. Right. These boys continue. And they kind of form up over here. Meanwhile, our specialty groups move to the side. We're going to do quarter time speed. So that this maneuver is absolutely perfect. Every single way. We're going to hit them with the best pinceroni I've ever done. Pull them up there, brothers. Pull them up there. Pull them up there. This is going to be one of the most powerful pinceronis you've ever seen. Yep. The terror. The terror of such a heavy pinceroni. Charge! Charge the back of them. These Amevians are just too scary. And we have to watch in slow mo, of course. Oh my god, just get owned. They didn't even stand to fight. I think our boys didn't even get touched. Yeah, kill them. Yeah, get some kills in there, man. Get a little bit of training. I love it. Oh, it looks like they accidentally... <laughs> kind of worked out, though. We did send our specialty unit to charge the back of them. Not the one I meant to put behind them, but still. Worked out. Alright, here we are, we're back, we're back. And, obviously, we didn't do all of the, the editing and the, the conversating because it is freaking hot, and I have to run the AC in the background so that my computer doesn't explode from the uh, sun-like temperatures outside. Uh, and I'm not even in a hot region, which sucks. For all the people who live in hot regions, I feel bad for you. Make sure you're drinking water. Like my boys, the Amebians here. They drink plenty of water. Lots and lots of water. And we've got a lot to go over. So that's kind of what I was going to do for this episode. We're going to just do the old fashioned way. We're going to do the, uh, I build, I come back and I show you guys what I've got. And I've got quite a bit. We've got 856 Amebians. We've got this massive wall here. Uh, 
basically saying stay out this is racism zone and uh all of anyone else who comes in here needs to go unless they're this traitor guy who is ambiguous i think they're humans i assume they're humans but i wish that they uh changed based off of what your species was or at least depending on how you you run your characters uh regardless it doesn't matter that's just a little bit of flavor for me i wish they were uh tailed i wish they had a little bit of blue skin or light blue skin you can see some of them are light blue or grayish gray is fine by me but here we are we're at the entrance the entrance of our city i like to always build on the outskirt of a town so that i know exactly where my intake is coming so this is where the shipments are coming in they're going to come along this road and they're going to get placed into these warehouses so i built this nice little warehouse district i tried to differentiate it a little bit from how i do it normally i know i always build these big square warehouses with imports for food and uh, raw resources it just makes sense that way i could do one specifically for fish ones for this one for that but it just makes sense to have all food and we have tons of spare space for food and we've got a lot coming in so it really is fine i don't know why it's sending me all the way to the side of the map um so it's really fine to keep these and you can see we've got houses kind of just to to fit this area you know i i like the idea of you coming into an area or a city and you have like houses right away and just large amounts of people just always walking around doing stuff so we have our speakers over on the sides we have our wells we have our hearth and we also have our stage which you can see all these people are watching and enjoying their services we have our nice little export depots tucked in here for anything that gets a little bit too high too much uh, resources we're going to export it and for the most part this half of the city needs to get flipped around and re redone there's a lot that work a uh, work that needs to get done over there but i just wanted to uh set up this half of the city and we got the basics of what we needed which was the laboratory we got a huge laboratory here Sh should have probably scrolled over this one but i always forget about what i've done that's been about like two and a half hours maybe and like i said it's been brutally hot it's so hot we have these like dry thunderstorms with like flash rain and floods it's crazy right now i don't know what's going on but regardless, we've got this massive laboratory here with plenty of space for more scientists. You can see we're short on a little bit of knowledge, so we'll actually put five more guys in there. And the idea is that anyone who lives in this area will go here or here to do their job or live here, basically. Uh, lots of housing, plenty of space for people to live, and then we have a food stall as well, a giant food stall with more services than anyone in the entire city ever could possibly need. So I'll never see this... Hopefully full. I pray that I never see it full. Uh, we also have a warehouse right here to support it and a giant janitor with room for 20 janitors. There's 20 janitor spots there. So this building in this area should never look bad. You also notice that I have these mud walls surrounding my garrison, or my training ground. That's so that if I look here in the noise, all of the noise is roughly contained to this area and I could even do it here Obviously, the people walking inside of this area are going to get blasted by noise. And it's probably really annoying. But for the most part, people traveling along this road, along this road, uh, they do not have to experience that much noise. So, kind of had that as an idea. And then you can see we have our little area over here. So, I probably got to put some some uh, walls just so that the guys who work at the warehouse don't have to experience the noise. Of course, the people who work in the carpenters, the smelters, etc. are going to have to experience noise. They don't like it. It's something that they have to deal with. It's not the worst. It's not a huge debuff, but it is something that affects them in the environment level, like on the environmental level. So we have our carpenter here. You can see that we've got a smelter. We've got a mason. We've got a weaver. We've got a smithy. And we've got a tailor. Obviously, they do what they say they do. And each one of these was the ones that I deemed the most valuable. And I've started to move over here. Felt like building at least three. Then we'll leave a space between them. And build a couple more. Keep all of our basic production over here. And we'll probably have a storage facility for it over here. So all of our storage, grand storage for this stuff like that we're producing will get placed here. Weapons and other things we'll probably produce over here. 
and have them pull from the grand storage which would essentially just be iron and we'll have like coals specifically being pulled from here uh we're gonna need some transports in the future i do have them unlocked technically i could probably start using them now probably line them up here but as these guys are very close and the reason why i did that is so that i don't have to use transports they'll just physically grab it and they'll fill this area up uh, and assuming this gets filled up if you see, we've got 5,660 some odd uh, cotton, for example. They will just start to fill this up when they come in from the cities. And then, I never do this. I never go over my regions, so I need to go over them. We have Ukin fill, which gives us fruit and wood. We have Woodard, which gives us fish. Novik, fish, coal, iron, stone, and opiates. As well as Paradin, which gives us fish, wood, herbs, meat, livestock, and leather, which is uh, basically the cows. And then we have those whites, which is cotton and clay. And these are all the things that you can get. You can see we've got two of the larger size cities, and then we've got three of the little cities, or towns, I should say. Uh, and these guys can only fit about two, and some of them need these little stocks, public stocks, in order to actually maintain their happiness. And actually, it looks like because we got the tech, we're actually able to pull those out uh, and grow the population up a little bit. It's not really going to do that much for me, but some of them, yeah, you can see, like, we'll be able to do this instead, which helps out a little bit because you can just raise your taxes somewhat, somewhat, and we'll take away this one as well. So I've actually put some tech points into growing our settlements, getting them up there a little bit more, so we'll do that. Each one of these guys should be giving me a little bit of money. And you can see these guys are still unhappy. So I still need some more tech points to actually get our happiness going. And if you look, it's uh, this right here, the loyalty, loving subjects. That's kind of what I've been going for. Helps out a lot. And we also got the loving subjects police HQ, which helps out as well. I went and uh, captured our neighbor here as well as whites. They had a very small army and you probably saw a very short clip of me demolishing their army with archers who I paid for. So like I said, we've got a lot of work over here. I've still got the hatcheries and I've still got Papermaker and all these other buildings to move as well as my bathhouse. I've got these canals and I think that the smartest thing right now is probably to get rid of these so that these guys actually get back into the labor pool. And we're going to start to organize the way these uh, canals look because there's a lot of canals and there's a lot of uh, pumps but none of them really lead to a right place and I and I want to make like a specific pump zone I think that pumps on one side should be good but I might have to do pumps on the other side so that the the distance is not there I really don't know if I can min max the size and the distance of everything but I do need to make sure that every single square inch of this city has water and especially areas like this where there's no real water I want to actually run a uh, canal, for example, down this road on this side. And, as a matter of fact, we should probably do it now to tell myself to do it. And that way, these guys have access at least to some fresh water nearby, if not on top of them. Obviously, we can't always get what we want when it comes to this stuff. But we can definitely try. So we can remove that. That will help up about a little bit and we'll remove that because what we're going to be doing is we're going to start moving our city eastward and filling in the spaces filling out this little area here starting to do all of our stuff in that fashion and you can see i've got this warehouse as well for weapons and armor and a little hospital for anyone who gets hurt at the training ground so far so good on that really the amevians are the easiest and i say it all the time but if you want to start out and have fun and actually do well start as the amevians they can fight they can build they can do all of this, the stuff you need and they're super cheap uh, all these mud walls i don't spend a dime on them i don't have to do any maintenance or anything like that i'm pretty sure or at least i think they do maintain them but they don't have to like use a resource which eventually gets tiring when you start to run out of stone and all your buildings are running out of stone because you're constantly cutting it into uh, fine fine stone so or cut stone now that we have that going 
the cut stone just gets used for pools for the most part. And I, I fill out these pools. You can see they're all they're all swimming around, laying in pools. It's a great it's a great life for the amphibians. And I look forward to the next one. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series so far. I know this is going to be a lot shorter of a video. Expect that it's it's just that time of year. When when I can, I do it. But when I can, I don't. You know. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye.